All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I'm heading over to Wilmslow to go and pick up a very low mileage VW Golf that I've agreed to buy. A viewer got in touch last week to see if I wanted to buy his late grandfather-in-law's 2005 Mark V Golf. Now, ordinarily, this sort of thing wouldn't really turn me on, but then he told me the mileage. This, what is it, 18-year-old Golf has only done 22,000 miles. His missus's grandfather bought it brand new, it's always been garaged, and then last year, or about 18 months ago, it was left, or what's the right word, bequeathed to them. At that point in time, 18 months or so ago, it had actually only done 10,000 miles. And I've loved to have bought it at 10,000 miles, don't get me wrong, but I'm still pretty excited at 22. This isn't the sort of stuff you come across every day. I haven't actually seen it yet, but he has sent me photographs, so I know what colour it is. Have a guess what colour this German car is. They're very imaginative, the Germans, aren't they? This one is grey, with a grey interior. Mark V Golfs always typically suffer with rust, but I'm told there isn't a single bit on this because it's always been garaged. It did look very dirty in the photographs, but I've asked him not to touch it. I wanted to create a nice before and after shot. It was also MOT'd last week and it passed without a single advisor item, so I'm guessing there's not an awful lot to do. I think it's due a service and, like I say, a very good clean. And I expect I'll give it a good buff. Maybe change the reg plates as well, you know, the usual sort of stuff. I've paid £2,650 for this, which, granted, sounds like a fortune for an old Golf, but remember, it's only done 22,000 miles. I had a quick look on Autotrader earlier, and I set my mileage cap to 30,000 miles just to see what was out there, and there were two, from four and a half grand up to five. So what I've decided to do, and I don't usually do this, but I'm going to set myself a budget of £500 to get this car looking as good as possible. That way, when it's all done, it should owe me about £3,200, and it should be worth £4,200, or maybe four and a half. So there is a decent chunk of profit in it. As always, before I agreed to buy it, I checked it out on Car Vertical, just to make sure it had never been stolen, never been involved in any recorded accidents, had no outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. And it came back clear on all fronts. Now, before you buy any used car or motorbike, it's really important that you do one of these checks. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com and type in the vehicle reg. It could not be simpler. It's also not expensive. If you pay for a couple of checks at once, they give you a bit of a discount. And on top of that, you can get 10% off if you use my promo code. Let me show you how it works. All you need to do is click the link below in the video description or use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. When I was doing a car vertical check on this Golf, the mileage was consistent every single year, so I knew it hadn't been clocked. I'm really giddy to go and collect this. I love buying older, low mileage cars. The real time warp pieces, a bit like my O2 SL55 that's still only done 18,000 miles. It's a bit like stepping back in time, it just fills you with nostalgia. Right, let's go and have a look, shall we? What's going on here then? You come in or what? You could literally get a bus through that and they're in a KA. Anyway. Well, we're in the low mileage Golf and two things I've noticed straight away. One is that it drives like a new car. Genuinely, 22,243 miles. I can feel the grain on the steering wheel. The clutch is nice and light. The gearbox is slick. It feels as though I'm driving a two year old car. It's nice and tight, it doesn't knock when you have bumps, that's all perfect. But the other thing I've noticed, because I'm very observant, is that it's absolutely disgusting. I don't know when the last time this car was cleaned. The back seat's full of dog hairs, there's full of bits of food, spilt drinks, it's filthy. But I'm fairly sure this would be an easy one to turn around. I'm not going to be the most popular person with the lads over at Tameside Valentin, but it should make for some very good before and after pictures. Externally, the body works very tidy. I think it could do with a fresh set of number plates, but they're the original plates. Do I keep the original ones or replace them with some new ones? New ones will lift it straight away, but then I lose some of its originality. It doesn't need an MOT because it was only done last week, but it is due a service. When you start it in a very Germanic way, it says, service now! That was a very poor Schwarzenegger impression, wasn't it, that? Get to the chopper. Apart from it being dirtier than I was expecting, it is everything I was hoping for. I've got both sets of keys, I've got the original keyring in the book pack. I've got reams of service history. In addition to that, in the owner's manual and in the service book, we've got records handwritten that the previous owner made of every time he contacted VW. It's that sort of thing, that pedigree that I love with cars. Because then you're not just buying a car, are you? You're buying the whole story, and I like that. Inside the Golf, apart from it being very dirty, there's no wear on anything, and I'm sure these mats will come up looking like new. The radio presets are saved to Classic FM and Radio 4, exactly as I was expecting. The cigarette light has never been used. This will make 
a very nice car. It's just completely original. Windows work. We've even got one of these little gross things that goes on the seat belt. The seat belts themselves look like they've never been used. Can't believe I'm getting so excited about an 18 year old Golf. Do you remember the last 05 Golf I bought with the rusty wheel arches? This is nothing like that. You can tell it's been garaged all its life because there's not a single spot of rust on it. So first things first, I'm going to take it down to my mechanics for a service, get them to check it over. Then I'm going to take it to the Valators, I think. Get them to attack this interior. Then, mm, perhaps fit some new reg plates, buff the headlamps a little. Standard stuff, really. I might, once it's had its valet, I might see if it needs a buff. I'm convinced this will look like a new car once I've finished. So that's my very simple to-do list. Give me a week or so and I'll catch up with you with hopefully a brand new looking 18 year old Golf. Cheers guys, see you then. You know I gave myself a budget of 500 pounds to bring this car back up to scratch. Well, that turned out to be a bit of a futile decision I've overspent. Not massively, granted, but I have gone a tad over budget. I'm not just saying this now to make myself feel better, although it does slightly, but what a transformation. This now looks like a 22,000 mile car. It looks so clean and original. After we last spoke, I took it down to my mechanics for a full service. I asked them to replace everything, all the filters, all the fluids, plus new spark plugs. Because although it's only done 22,000 miles, it's still 18 years old. And I'm not sure if it would ever been done. My mechanic called me after the service was done and she told me what a mint car it was, which I kind of already knew, but it's nice to have that confirmed. But she did tell me that all four tyres needed replacing. They looked okay, they had plenty of tread remaining, but they were old. Thinking about it, they were probably the original tyres. I should have checked the date stamp. Anyway, I asked her to put four brand new tyres on it. And that's the thing that sent me over budget. Had it not been for those meddling kids, I'd have got to... Oh no, that's something else, isn't it? Quoting Scooby-Doo now. Had it not been for those tyres, then I'd have come out on budget. So when that was done, I picked it up from my mechanics and took it over to the lads at Tameside Valentin for a full detailed clean and polish, which it desperately needed. If you remember, it was, well, it was a right state. There were sticky spilt drinks in the cup holders, dog hairs in the back, and just general filth everywhere. It was pretty grim. But now, you really can't believe this is the same car. It looks like new. I know it's 18 years old, but these seats look like they've never been sat in. I just can't believe it's the same car. I picked it up from there this morning, and instantly, it drives better. I know that's probably a weird thing to say, but for me, a clean car drives better than a dirty one. I know there's absolutely no science behind that, but I think it's true, and you'll probably agree. As I'm driving along now, I'm looking at the dash and all the buttons and switches, and there's just no wear on anything. It's remarkable, really. It's weird, isn't it? You buy something, don't use it much, and it stays like new. Weird. Who'd have thought it? Get on your side of the road. I'm not a huge Golf fan, I've always said this. I actually prefer the Mark IV to the Mark V anyway. But, this does drive particularly well. And there's no rot on the front wheel arches, so you can tell it's been garaged and looked after. I decided not to replace the number plates. They're the original ones, and I just thought it'd be a bit of a waste if I take them off and replace them with my own. Listen to that engine. 18 year old 1.6 litre petrol engine. It's about as noisy as being in a Rolls Royce Phantom. He'll start. Try not to stall it. Would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it? When I got it back to work, I found some grey touch up paint and I touched up some of the marks myself. Just takes your eye off it. I thought that was an engine light then. It is just a frost warning. We had quite a bit of snow overnight. Oh, yeah, look at that. Because I'm a perfectionist, I would have rather painted the front bumper, but the marks weren't that bad. And with some metallic grey touch-up paint, it just takes your eye off it. So I think I'll get away with that. And I think that's about it. I haven't done anything else to it. Overall, it was definitely worth buying. I've got it advertised for, well, actually that's not true. I had it advertised for 4495. I started the advert with no photographs, obviously, while it was being prepared, and advertised it for 4495. And I got two phone calls on it straight away. Then my mechanic told me about the wheels, so I thought, hang on a minute, maybe 4495 is a bit too cheap. So I took the advert down, 
and then waited till today till I'd photographed it and then redid the advert. And I put it up at 4995. And you might think that sounds a bit greedy, but with this job, you have to maximize on the cars which will allow it because it makes up for the ones that you lose out on. And there are a fair few of those a month, as you've seen. Anyway, I've got an appointment on it tomorrow and it was actually the first guy that called. So if he comes and he wants to buy it, I'll honor the lower price. I'll be quite happy with 4495, to be honest. Whatever happens, there should be some profit in it. So I'll be quite happy either way. Right, let me park up somewhere scenic. That won't be hard today. Oh, Defender, that's nice. I'll park up somewhere scenic and I'll talk you through my costs. I don't know why I've come this way. I immediately am regretting it. I'm gonna get stuck in the snow here. What an absolute moron. Why have I come this way? I'm writing this car off now, aren't I, after all that? Okay then, so my bill at my mechanics, hang on, let me get the photograph up. So it's had oil filter, air filter, pollen filter, spark plugs, oil, four tires, labor and MOT test fee. That was 460 pounds, 36 pence. On top of that, this will be quite a short video today, it was 150 pounds spent at the Valators, and that, to be honest, was the best 150 pounds I've ever spent. And if you remember, I paid 2650 for the car, so 2650 plus the 460, 36, plus the 150, that takes my total to 28, 32, 3,260 pounds and 39 pence. So if I get four and a half grand for it tomorrow, then I'll have made 1,239 pounds, 64 pence. Not bad, is it? Well, I think that's about it. Thank you once again for watching. I'm gonna to have to try and get out of here now without completely losing control of it. Wish me luck. Cheers, guys. See you next time.